Okay guys, welcome back to the channel. You can see today we've got the Mini Electric with us. Uh, this is a really interesting car actually, and we will be taking it out on the road shortly, but I want to start off just having a little walk around. So the Mini Electric starts from £24,900 in the UK after the £3,000 government grant is applied. There are three levels of trim available uh, that essentially apply different options to the car. So for the level one spec, you do actually get a lot of things chucked in. You've got things like the sat nav, cruise control, just all the brilliant things that come on these minis these days. And then there's the other two levels. So you've got level two, which just adds a few extra bits and then level three, like this car here, with, which is basically a fully loaded car. And this car is £34,900 and that is a hell of a lot of money for a Mini. But we will get onto that later on and I'll probably try and justify why it might be worth that. So obviously a lot of electric cars these days are just really kind of bold with their styling and they just, some of them actually look a bit strange. The Mini is based on the F56 platform and as some of you viewers may know I have a F56 JCW myself so I'm quite familiar with this car. And essentially what they've done is taken the fuel tank out and put a 32.6 kilowatt hour battery where that fuel tank was under the rear seats um, and we'll get onto the battery a, a bit later but it is quite small compared to some of its competitors so as many have just basically taken that f56 platform and made it electric it does mean the styling is pretty normal and it can actually be quite understated now you can have the mini electric in various levels of spec as i mentioned and it can be made to look just like any other car or in other cases more like an electric car so as you can see with this particular car, it looks pretty much just like any other normal Mini. There are a few little styling cues like the e-badges that you can see around, but generally this is quite understated. Now on some of the cars you can spec uh, sort of a yellow mirror caps to tie in with the electric badge uh, color as well. And also just other little bits of yellow pinstriping around the car, which make it stand out. One of the key features, however, is these wheels. Now they're not massively to my taste, but I think they're quite a quirky design and quite cool because you'll probably notice it looks a little bit like a UK three pin plug. Now there are some benefits to the design of the wheels. They're obviously designed to reduce drag, uh, like you see on many other electric cars. I know the Tesla has those aero caps as well that fit over a set of normal wheels. Um, and it's just to help increase that range. That's the whole point of these. You can spec other wheels. I know I would personally spec some other wheels that look a bit more understated. And they've got some nice ones just as you would find on other F56 minis. Now the interior of the Mini is a really nice place to be, just like it is on the other F56 Minis to be honest. Um, they've really got this interior dialed in. Is it worth 35 grand? Well, to be honest, I think it is. There's a really nice use of materials. This leather's really nice on the level three spec in here. On the level one and two, I don't believe you can get leather. Um, I think it's just a cloth seat, but they're still really nice supportive seats. And yeah, just the material usage is nice. We've got a really nice instrument cluster. Uh, fully digital on the electric mini and i must say that's a big improvement for me the analog in instrument cluster they used on other f56 minis was really quite hard to read although the speedometer was fine it was just the rev counter is really kind of tiny and you just couldn't see it so this is much clearer much clearer design and it gives you a bit more information as well on the level three spec you also have a heads up display which is really good nice and clear and easy to read and it just kind of brings all that information right into your line of sight as well we obviously got the full widescreen nav in this um, and it's the latest version as well we also have really nice panoramic roof on this and god it just really opens up the cabin i can say from my time spent in uh, my f56 jcw it, it does feel quite small actually with the completely black headliner and really with this extra light coming in, it feels much more spacious in here. And after having spent some time sort of driving around in this electric mini, it's really comfortable. These seats are great and supportive. Uh, there's plenty of leg room, even in the rear actually, which we'll show you. And they really are quite usable cars these days, even though they look small. So one final thing that comes on this spec of the mini is the Harman Kardon sound system. And I can tell you this sounds absolutely brilliant. Um, it just feels like a really sort of high-end premium sound. It's not hollow or anything like that. And uh, it really does add to the experience, I suppose, of being out in this car. Okay, so the electric mini has several different driving modes. Uh, we'll just fire this up. So you can see we've got mid mode, which is the sort of default driving mode, if you like. And it's just a default throttle pedal setting. It feels pretty nice, actually. Um, from there, we can flick it up into sport. And basically what that does is shortens the throttle pedal and tightens up the steering. It also adds a bit of weight. That's a bit artificial for my liking. I'm not a huge fan of that. I prefer to keep it in mid. If you want to try and get a bit of extra range, you can put it into green, which basically softens the throttle right up and makes the pedal really long um, so basically nothing happens for the first sort of 80 percent of pedal travel and then if you want to go even further to completely maximize the range you can do green plus and you can see there it says without comfort functions and what this actually does it disables things like heating as you can see these have now turned to blank and it also disables the seat heaters as well and that's just to completely maximize the range
Okay, so here we are then, on the road in the electric Mini, and I tell you what, it's a really exciting experience actually. It's the first time I've driven an electric car, and it really is quite different. Obviously I knew what, roughly what to expect, um, but this thing's really surprised me. One thing that stood out is it's a seriously versatile little car. And what I mean by that is, it's a perfectly good town cruiser. You know, that primarily, that's probably what this car is going to be used for. But then, you take it to a set of B roads, and wow, I mean, this thing really comes alive. It has 184 horsepower from that electric motor and 199 foot-pounds of torque. So, it's pretty quick and it's, I suppose, comparable to the likes of a Cooper S, uh, which is by no means a slow car. So, yeah, it really is quite something on these B roads. Now, obviously, the, the big thing about electric cars is it's going to be the range. And in this Mini, it's quoted 145 miles, and that's per the WLTP uh, regulations, which, if you know anything about electric cars, they're often very much overstated, actually. Real world, I think you're probably going to be looking at about 100 miles out of this car, um, which, you know, it's not terrible. And that small battery, as I said, it's 32.6 kilowatt hours. And actually, for comparison, the likes of a Peugeot 208e and Corsa e have a 50 kilowatt hour battery so it is quite a bit smaller however one of the main benefits of that is that it charges up way quicker so on a fast charger this will do an 80 percent charge in about half an hour i think it's 36 minutes to be precise and you know that's really pretty good isn't it so like i say i mean for most people i would imagine this car is going to be their commuting car and probably doing fairly low sort of mileage day to day so that kind of range really you know it's perfect for that i suppose now, having that battery pack under the rear seat, it does add quite a lot of weight. This car weighs 1,365 kilos. Now, for comparison, that's, that's about 80 kilos more than a JCW of the same generation Mini. Um, so it's certainly pretty heavy, and it, it does feel heavier. However, it actually feels like that might aid the ride a little bit because it feels much more settled and, you know, altogether a more grown-up car, actually. That power does still go quite a long way though. We've got a 0 to 60 time of 7.3 seconds and top speed is 93 miles an hour. So it's not particularly high, but that's often the case with electric cars. Um, the motors aren't particularly geared for high speed. And I think the likes of the Porsche Taycan obviously has two speeds as well. So that helps with the top speed on that car. But 93 miles an hour, I mean, I mean that's above the legal speed limit in most countries. And for what this car is gonna be used for, I don't think you need any, anything more than that. So as I said, the Mini Electric starts at about £24,900 and this being the level 3 spec, uh, it's about £33,900 after that £3,000 government grant. Now that's quite a lot of money and it, it really, it's more expensive than the John Cooper Works, put it that way. The only thing more expensive will be the 2020 GP in terms of the Mini lineup. I did have a quick look on some PCP calculators just to kind of see what you might be looking at for this. And it was about £300 a month with £4,500 down and about 10,000 miles a year. Now, 300 quid a month, you know, that's, that's pretty reasonable. And let's not forget, most people tend to finance their cars these days. Um, I would say it's quite a hefty deposit, but yeah, maybe, maybe that makes more sense than a 34,000 pound list price, I don't know. One thing I will say is it's wonderfully quiet to drive on the road, actually. The suspension's really supple. Uh, it's, it's, it's soft, but not too soft. And, body roll is it's minimal to be honest one thing i will say is that on some of these b roads it doesn't feel as well damped as maybe the likes of the jcw does that's quite a different driving experience and it, it's much more firm but actually this kind of suspension setup is probably preferable in my opinion to that so round and about town i think this thing's absolutely perfect um more than enough power for what you'll need day to day very comfortable we've got a really nice level of spec as i've said in here it's a very comfortable place to be and it's a nice place to be i definitely feel like the money is well spent um but then you get it onto these b roads as i mentioned like, here's a completely different car i mean may this be the first hot hatchback that's electric i, I don't know it, it's maybe not as hard edged as most hot hatches are but it's certainly a step in that direction and with it being electric that power is instant um and it really does fly down these roads the handling feels great. The steering is obviously pretty numb with it being electrically assisted. And yeah, okay, maybe that bit's lacking slightly, but it's very precise and it feels nicely weighted. 
Um, we have got the different driving modes as well. Things will tighten up a bit in sport mode. But, I mean, when you start chucking it onto these roads, it feels very capable, and that power is just absolutely instant. You even get a surprising amount of torque steer, actually, on these uh, harder cambers. Brake pedal feels nice as well. It's got quite a good initial bite, and the uh, pedal feels strong. And we've also got that electric regen, don't forget. There's two stages of electric regen. There's a, a low and a high um, regeneration. For me, the high level of regeneration is just a little bit too much, but it does basically mean the car's drivable on one pedal. So I suppose maybe that's going to be more relaxing and just easier again to commute in. Uh, but for me, I quite like a, a lower and more natural regeneration feeling. Now this car is running on the, the Pirelli P7 Cinturato run flats, which came on my JCW, and I think they come on most, if not all, of the F56 Minis, actually. Now I was obviously quite critical of that tyre when it was paired with the JCW, but I have to say it works much better on here. It really doesn't feel anywhere near as harsh as it did when I had it on the JCW, um, and I think it works much better, actually. It's also very quiet on the road, there's very little wind noise, and again, those tyres really help to keep the noise down as well. So yeah, I think overall on the road, this thing has really impressed me, actually, and you can still have a lot of fun in it. Yeah, okay, we're lacking some of that sound that a normal internal combustion engine would have, but you do get a little bit of satisfying sort of motor whine, actually, when you start off. That sounds pretty cool. And obviously at lower speeds, you've got that um, sort of automated noise that comes on to make pedestrians aware of the presence of the car so you kind of hear that a bit lower speeds as well <laughs> now one thing i will say is as soon as you start driving it hard that range is just dropping right down now we're showing about 75 percent on the sort of range gauge um, but that's only showing 57 miles of range now it's pretty hot today so i've got the air conditioning on and i noticed earlier as soon as i turned that on that dropped about five miles of range so i suppose that is one of the major flaws that battery you're not gonna really be able to comfortably do long distances in this car, let's be honest. Um, it's much more gonna be for town driving, for commuting, you know, for that kind of thing. It's not gonna be a long distance car. And in fairness, the F56 Mini, it's not, it's not really designed for long distances anyway. So arguably, maybe this sits perfectly well in the lineup. Now, if you're familiar with battery cars, uh, battery degradation is something you've got to be aware of. And basically over time what that means is the battery becomes less efficient and the same charge will allow the car to do less range basically. Now Mini are guaranteeing the battery for eight years or 100,000 miles. So I mean that's pretty good isn't it? Uh, if you manage to get to 100k miles I'd say that's, you know, any car 100,000 miles is, pretty, is doing pretty well. So if they're guaranteeing the battery for that long, well yeah that's pretty good. I suppose though if it's going to be the eight years rather than 100k miles that's maybe not as much you'd like to think the battery would last a lot longer than that and i'm sure it probably will that's obviously just their guarantee so suppose then do i think it's worth the money well yeah i think it is if, if you're in the market for a little electric sort of hatchback type car um i mean personally i would be getting this car on pcp i, I wouldn't be shelling out cash for this i think it's it's too much cash but the PCP deals are pretty attractive and I think, yeah, maybe it does justify this car. The build quality certainly reflects the price, if nothing else. Um, and I think really what the car is capable of, yeah, I think it is worth the money. However, it's going to be quite a niche area of the market. I, I don't think this is going to be a car that, you know, everyone's going to be jumping in. We've got a long way to go before that happens and I think the range really needs to be 300, let's say, before it kind of gets to the point where anyone can jump in a car and you're going to have the mass pickup of these electric cars, which ultimately if we're going to be doing anything about the climate we do need the masses to move into electric cars and hopefully enthusiasts like myself and all you other guys out there can still be driving petrol cars on weekends or whatever and just enjoying them for what they are now i'd just like to say a massive thank you to cooper teesside they've once again lent us this car for the full weekend and that's really kind of them and we really appreciate that um, it's allowing us to do more and more videos and uh, hopefully keep you guys entertained. It's a really great group of people down at Cooper Teesside, uh, really helpful staff and just friendly. So yeah, please do go and check out the links in the description. That would be much appreciated. Anyway, guys, I hope you've enjoyed the video. It's been absolutely brilliant to get out on this electric mini and uh, yeah, it's really quite surprised me and I've been very much impressed by it. I think in terms of electric technology, things have still got quite a way to go before, as I say, the masses can pick them up. But I think things are going in a pretty good direction and uh, they are gradually improving. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, found it interesting. And uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.